What's up guys, 3Beat here. Welcome to another episode from the VGHC. I believe this is the episode 3 of the talk series and today I'm going to be playing Killing Floor 2. Right off the bat, I can say that this game is a blast to play. And if you have not played it, I believe it's on sale. So definitely check it out and see if it's for you. Um, the base mechanics and how the weapons feel is, is absolutely fantastic. And I commend Tripwire Interactive for paying close attention to how all the weapons feel. Um, I've played a, a couple hours of this game and, and no gun felt like a throw out to me. They all seem to serve their purpose and if I died it felt it was more so my lack of attention and it didn't feel cheap. Um, that is until you get to the higher difficulties and that opinion sort of changes. Um, which, you know, that's another thing. Um, which, you know, that's all great for a title like this. This game has sort of a similarity to Call of Duty's zombie mode. There is sort of a currency system in between waves of the horde mode. From my own experience, I can say that the player base was pretty nice, not only in server numbers, but I would say about 80% of the time, the people I played with are actually working together, giving you health and, and ammo. And this was nice to see, not only considering how hard th this game would be if there was no teamwork, but just because from my own experiences, newer games tend to encourage gamers to be on their own path with the illusion of teamwork. So it's really cool to see a game where it, uh, you know, encourages teamwork. There's only a few games that are sort of doing that nowadays, so it's, it's nice to see it in this game. So do I think you should buy this game? When I think of that question, I think of how when I explain the game, it sounds completely generic, just explaining some of the features. And at the end of the day, it tends to rely on what you are into. There's a vast marketplace for zombie games at the moment, and some people can feel a bit burnt out on just hearing about another zombie game title. When thinking about generic content in games, it can also be brought to subject that most, if not all gamers, do do not actually like innovation. People long for familiarity in a product. While one can argue in the gaming industry, technology is constantly advancing, which lessens the effect of previous games feeling familiar. It should be stated that um, a lot of game concepts have already been done a million times. Nothing is really new when you think about it. And that's um, pretty true with movies as well. Battlefield 1 is nothing new in terms of innovation, yet why do gamers anxiously await AAA gaming experiences if in the end they end up being subjected to all encompassing generic video game titles? I've simply just reached the conclusion that we may as gamers like hidden familiarity and it's the reason why a majority previously hated World War II games due to the constant stream of those titles appearing at the time um, but now people are longing for them after a brief hiatus from the gaming industry. In its basic core it's really how you approach the generic content which can bridge to millions of different variables of different decisions throughout game development. Now this isn't it an excuse for crappy indie developers um, to make an exact clone of DayZ or whatever popular game is out there. Um, my argument is pretty much that you basically shouldn't judge a book by its cover all the time. And I'm definitely trying to gain more of an open mind when it comes to exploring different genres of games. Though I know the vast majority of the market do not have that same mindset. I'm not preaching in any way that this game is perfect and I don't want people to mistake my sort of sidetracked speech on inclusive games as that. Killing Floor 2 does unfortunately suffer from needing more boss fights and, and different modes in the game. There are currently two different bosses and they appear once you survive all seven of the different waves, which spikes in difficulty as you progress through them. Killing Floor 2 is surely lacking on content as of the recording of this review, but Tripwire seems to be pretty good with development support basing on their history of the last Killing Floor game with lots of mods and, and 
maps from the community, which people still tend to enjoy and play, which is impressive being that the game was released back in, in 2009. So in conclusion, uh, I'd say my first impressions of this game was pretty good. Uh, considering the developers continued support on the game, I'm looking forward to doing another impressions or review when the game actually has more to show. Um, there are a few series shows I've been working on coming to the channel, so stay tuned. And if you guys enjoyed this video or not, let us know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more content from the VGHD. I'm 3Bit signing off. Have a good one.